Let's talk a little bit about terminology because it's important that we get our terminology right. Often we talk about dyslexia as though it's a thing and actually when we talk about dyslexia we might be covering a, a vast range of different terms. I'm going to talk about some of these terms. Not all of them, it's a very, very long list, but let's just have a look at some of the terms that we might mean when we talk about dyslexia. So first of all, there's the word dyslexia. Now dyslexia is complex and multifaceted and has ups as well as downs, but when people talk about the challenges of dyslexia, they really mean majorly the difficulty in learning to read, mainly because of phonological processing. That is, when you read something on a piece of paper, it gets translated into sounds in your head, in your mind's ear, as it were. And this difficulty in, in phonological decoding, in turning the, the things that you read into the sounds in your, in your head, this is dyslexia. It's called phonological decoding challenges. There's also dysgraphia. Now, dysgraphia is often about difficulties in learning to write, mainly in forming the words properly. So do you form a full letter when you're writing the letter I or the letter T? Or do you get it the right way round? Or do you, is it wobbly or that kind of thing? So dysgraphia is often challenges in learning to write. Dysorthographia, on the other hand, is challenges learning to spell correctly. Challenges gaining those skills needed to spell. Then there's dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is challenges with maths skills, mainly with things like operations, division, multiplication, that sort of thing, or with amount, which is the larger amount. And it may be that with dis, uh, dyscalculia, sorry, it may be that with dyscalculia, you see a small letter eight and a large letter seven, and you, you're not immediately sure which of them represents the larger amount. So dyscalculia is about the larger, the macro operations of mathematics. Next we come to dyspraxia. Now dyspraxia is really about coordination skills, fine motor skills, gross motor skills, this sort of thing, about judging distances. It's mainly about movement and the kinds of skills involved in movement. There's also an aspect of dyspraxia called oromotor dyspraxia, oromotor dyspraxia. And this is about the skills needed to form the words. So it's about the control of the muscles, often around the mouth, to form words. So people with oromotor dyspraxia may find it difficult to form words and to speak clearly. However, there are other words that also refer to the difficulties in forming your speech. These include dysarthria, dysphasia, dyslalia, and dysphonia. With dysarthria, it's a difficult speaking because the muscles that you use to form words are weak. Dysphasia is an impairment in the production of speech, often due to neurological causes such as perhaps brain trauma or disease. Dyslalia is the inability to articulate meaningfully, the, inarticul the inability to properly articulate speech in a meaningful way. And finally, dysphonia is the medical term for disorders of the voice, generally disorders of the voice. And so we can see that when we talk about dyslexia, it's very easy to mix up, for instance, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dysorthographia, um, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, and when we talk about dyspraxia, then we might mean dyspraxia in its sort of fine motor skills or gross motor skills way. We might mean oromotor dyspraxia. But of course, when we talk about oromotor dyspraxia, we might also need to talk about dysphasia or dyslalia or dys, uh, um, dys, uh, dysphonia. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so this is why it's important we get this right. It's not only about how we describe people, it's about how we understand them. And if we get these, these, these labels wrong, the danger is that we might describe somebody incorrectly. And if we describe somebody in, in, incorrectly, then we might, be, we might find ourselves approaching them incorrectly, giving them the incorrect accommodations or not serving their needs correctly. So it's very easy to mix up, for instance, um, 
oromotor dyspraxia and dyslalia. Are they the same thing? Well, actually, they're not quite the same thing. And if we mix them up, then we're doing somebody a disservice. So it's really useful to find out what kind of language we need to use when we're talking about dyslexia and related, closely related and maybe not so closely related conditions.